So we're here with Randy Peterson of Flyer Talk, and who doesn't know Randy? <laughs> and here is Simply Flying's first interview without tie, without a jacket, by the pool in Florida. Randy, welcome to Simply Flying. Tell us a little about yourself for those minority of readers who might not have heard of you on Simply Flying. Well, actually, I'm just a passenger. I'm, I'm I have no interest of ever working in the airline or hotel business. I have, don't have a background in that. Uh, I actually worked in menswear uh, retail years ago and in 1986 I figured out the fine print of frequent flyer programs and actually went to Hawaii free and uh, Europe for free and uh, I go, free really works. It's good for me. It's good for everybody. So. I set out to uh, make sure I understood how I could go back to Hawaii for free. And uh, as time went on, uh, this was in the early 80s, as time went on, I find I was spending more time helping other employees for the company I worked for, helping them go to Hawaii for free. And one day I got a, a goofy idea, and it was to start a little newsletter to uh, actually help other people go to Hawaii for free or get an upgrade. and. Uh, created a little newsletter and uh, frankly right time right place but uh, bought a little Apple Macintosh then and uh, now I own 50 Macs and uh, now we're still publishing uh, 23 years later so uh, from a little beginning of a newsletter now have Inside Flyer magazine and uh, moved on to the web and, and what a lot of people probably uh, would find interesting is uh, I'm really kind of a tech guy, not by training, just uh, by appreciation, but in 1987, think about this, 1987, right. I started to publish on what was then called CompuServe, NewsNet, the original <laughs> kind of uh, proprietary basis for the internet, and uh, then in 1994, I started to publish frequent flyer stuff on a little company called AOL. Right then, there was a little company was big and others. So uh, I got started earlier on with posting stuff online and developing stuff online, all to do with frequent flyer. I don't know anything about seat pitch, airfares, <laughs> meals. I don't know the difference between Airbus and Boeing. So uh, if that's what you're interested in, there's a lot of other people that are really, really smart. But I just do miles and points. And today, uh, a lot of websites, Flyer Talk, Boarding Area, Inside Flyer, Web Flyer. Uh, I do a charity thing called Mile Donor. I'm big about giving back and uh, uh, have uh, bought an interest in a seat expert relaunching that and got a bunch of other stuff but uh, I wish I were 16 years old had a T1 living in my parents basement I'd be the happiest kid in the world that's fantastic well the thing is the good thing is that you still have the energy of a 16 year old <laughs> which we saw in evidence and full evidence at the Freddy's last night yeah. now you have been a frequent flyer and you have been telling people how to leverage on frequent flyer yep. programs. Now frequent flyer programs also tend to be where the most brand loyal customers for airlines are. How do you think airlines can tap on these most loyal customers better than the transactional systems they've got now? Well, you know, the secret of it is to get that deep emotional things, and it's not always based on rewards. I think people would think that Randy's going to talk about heresy because while I'm a big fan of frequent flyer programs and loyalty programs in general, that's really not the only thing out there. For instance, I talked about earlier, I have about 50 Macs. I am Apple's most rabid fan, and there are, there goes the plane, there are hundreds of thousands of people like me that just love Apple products. And guess what? I never reward it. I don't earn extra products based upon right. how many I own, the fact that I've bought everything they've ever produced. It's a deep emotional thing. I like the product. I don't care that I pay more for it or anything right. else. And so I think part of it is, is uh, in terms of branding, top of mind stuff, is maybe airlines use frequent flyer programs and other loyalty things to kind of as makeup, to camouflage what's mm -hmm. really wrong with that organization. When in fact they've forgotten how to be really good marketers, and I think you probably understand really good marketers 
are good across many different phases right. of things. And branding is one, deep emotional things. And you know, take a look at Singapore. Why would Singapore need a frequent flyer program? I mean, I've never <laughs> found anybody that doesn't love Singapore's service, the airline, and everything else. So, right. you know, I think maybe there's an opportunity for people to take advantage of what's now become known as social media and really find out where their most passionate customers are. Not just the idea that they have 100,000 miles or 100,000 right. points. What does that prove? That shows frequency, but that doesn't show you passion. Mm -hmm. It doesn't show you recommendation. And frankly, it doesn't even show you that you own their whole wallet. I mean, right. you could have a customer with 100,000 miles, and guess what? They have 100,000 miles on four different airlines. <laughs> uh, so, right. But you want to find out which ones they're talking about, which ones they recommend to other people, which ones that, if there were no frequent flyer miles, which one would they fly? And I think that would be a real challenge where somebody could, you know, honestly go back to the real base of marketing, forget the revenue, and find out and really develop like it is. I only wear Nike stuff mm -hmm. when I travel, and I only buy Apple Macintosh stuff, but right. I don't get any rewards from any of those. Right. But I honestly think I'm a better customer than those two companies that I don't get rewards from mm -hmm. than I do with the programs I have a million miles with. Right, right. Now you mentioned Nike and Apple, there's two brands. What are some of some aspects of these brands which you think are so good that they should be emulated by airlines? Well, you know, Apple's famous for the simplicity. I never need an owner's manual. Now, right. tell me how many frequent flyer programs that anybody belongs to where they don't need to figure out how the program really works. Right. Okay? <laughs> Every bit. I make a business out of explaining how these programs work. <laughs> it's like an owner's manual. But if they were so simple and so good, like an Apple experience, mind you, then they would need a rewards program. So I think Apple does it through just the intuitive nature. They spend a lot of time understanding how people act, not right. how people talk, right. but how they act on things. And the interface and uh, all the other things are absolutely stunning. Now at Nike, it's about performance. There it's something a little bit different because right. you know, sweatpants and a shirt, what can you do with them? But Nike has, you know, gets into, I think they call it the id, the, the connection, if you will, that by wearing Nike, I'm a better performer. Uh, and they do it through uh, images of athletes and other things. Right. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a really good basketball player mm -hmm. because I wear the same things that the best basketball player wears. So they've done that emotional visual connection. Mm -hmm. And you know, at the end of the day, that's pretty powerful stuff. I right. mean, so we they had an interesting debate yesterday about the most valuable customer for yeah. an airline. And there were executives from United and Continental who defined it as the highest yielding passenger. Uh, <laughs> but there were there are a lot of different metrics. Now, what is the most valuable customer yeah. for an airline? The most valuable customer is one that flies you when it's most convenient for them, but also flies you when it's less convenient for them. Because it's less about airfare. You know, the whole idea in any business is what they call wallet share. You want to mm -hmm. own X percent of wallet. Right. But I think your most valuable customer is the one that goes out of their way, like guys that say the highest yields your most valuable. Not really, mind you, because mm -hmm. you know most of those high yield customers, and you know this better than me. Most of those aren't flying that airline because it's their choice. They're flying they're because to. they're corporate travel agency, right. or it was frequency, or they had to get to a certain client that was there, right. and they didn't go out of their way. It was many other things. So I like the little guy out there who honestly pays their own way but goes out of their own way. To me, they're valuable. The reason why, it's just like friendships. You know, right. your best friends are the ones that stick with you in the tough times. Right. And that is the best friend.